Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by Mr. Muskie Charters, offering full-service guided fishing trips for walleye, muskie, bass, and sturgeon on Lake St. Clair and the Detroit and St. Clair Rivers. Booking information is online at mrmuskiecharters.com. Hey everybody, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. Thank you so much for joining us this week. Lots of good stuff on this week's show. We're going to start on the big water. We're going to show you a women's tournament out of the Port of Ludington that is always a lot of fun up there. We're also going to do a little goose banding on this week's show, and we're going to teach you a little bit about the world of youth bass fishing. Lots of good stuff on this week's show. You stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze Dancing on the pine forest floor the autumn colors catch your eyes, here come the crystal winter skies. It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors. Someday our children all will see this is their finest legacy. The wonder and the love of Michigan as the wind comes whispering through the trees. The sweet smell of nature's in the air. Great Lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream. It's the love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by By Country Smokehouse. Offering a variety of meat products, Country Smokehouse is located three miles south of I-69 and M-53, just south of Imlay City. Country Smokehouse is a meat processor, a butcher, and a destination for sportsmen. By AnglerQuest Pontoons, a mid-Michigan company building boats for fishermen by fishermen. AnglerQuest Pontoons are designed for comfort and functionality. On the web at anglerquestpontoons.com. By KL Outdoor, a Muskegon manufacturer of sportsmen's outdoor products for over 30 years, featuring the terrain line of hard-sided hunting blinds designed for quick setup and removal with quiet operation. For more information and other products, kloutdoor.com. Michigan-based Vanguard has manufactured quality optics, hunting packs, and accessories for over 30 years. Discover all our most recent innovations at vanguardworld.us. Since I grew up in Ludington, every time I get to see a sunrise there, well, it always reminds me of many great times on the big water. Today we had high hopes of making some new memories at the Ludington Offshore Classics Ladies' Day. I was aboard the boat Silver Addiction, and after the 6 a.m. shotgun start, we ran 17 miles out into deep water in hopes of finding some fish. We had a full boat today, five ladies, a couple captains, and one Yahoo holding a camera. The ladies' tournament is always fun and pretty competitive at the same time. Well, what's the plan of attack, young man? The plan of attack? Yeah. Catch as many fish as we can catch. <laughs> how, how deep water are we in here? We are in 434 feet of water. Wow. We're going to be fishing about top 20 feet. Fishing for steelhead? Yep, steelhead, and there's a bunch of lake trout been out here up on the surface, too. Uh, there's been an occasional uh, mature fish floating around out here. Okay. Our ladies team was made up of Elaine Pierce, Taylor Aaron, Sarah Herbert, Roxanne Thatcher, and Madison Coleman. All these ladies have caught big water fish before, and as soon as we set lines, we started to find some suspended fish. And right off the bat, the skunk was out of the box as we landed fish number one, which always feels pretty good so early in the day. All right, here comes the first fish. <laughs> we were really into the fish right off the bat. The guys had been finding fish out in the deep water and we were hoping to find some decent steelhead and lakers before really targeting the king salmon, which have been hard to find. But at this point in the day, every fish, well, it was a welcome sight. What was the bet here? Um, well, I've never caught a lake trout before, but supposedly Craig's the master. Okay. So to me, but to me, they were mythical creatures. So he <laughs> said that he was going to put a bunch on the boat, and I said I would kiss them. Oh, boy. <laughs> 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 
Mark Williams, one of the owners of the boat and one of the captains on board, explained why he started here today. A lot of temperature breaks, offshore steelhead, and a nice mixed bag of lake trout obviously already. But uh, the tent breaks have been set up good and there's also been some big kings that have been here as well. So decided we come out here and give the girls uh, some action instead of just trying to stay inside and just pick and uh, get some more fish that way. So okay. hopefully it'll keep going. And what, what is going on today here in Ludington? Well, today's the uh, Ludington uh, Offshore Classic Ladies' Day. Uh, it's also the Kids' Derby. So uh, today, of course, the ladies have to catch all the fish. They have to net the fish. Uh, they just make us do all the work otherwise. <laughs> so they get to have all the fun, which is good because uh, that allows us to go fishing the rest of the year. <laughs> so nice. first prize uh, for the ladies' term is $1,000, sponsored by uh, Bud Light in that. So that's uh, pretty good. Oh, we got another one going diving right there. Yeah, we did miss a few fish today, which put Sarah back up in the rotation as the next fish made its way in. These ladies' days are a great way to get some new folks into fishing. And Elaine, a woman charter boat captain, thinks getting women outside is very important. If you haven't taken your wife or your daughter's fishing, it's an excellent thing to do. It's awe-inspiring for these girls to be out here. It's a great family event. Ludington is probably the number one port, and you can go out with a lot of different charters if you've never done it before and catch fish. You don't have to bring anything other than yourselves and a one-day fishing license. And to take your daughters out fishing, if you teach them to fish, they're going to have a wonderful time their whole lives. Whether it's salmon fishing, fly fishing, bass fishing, take them out. Grab your daughter and go. Grab your wife and go. Make it a family event. I remember catching my very fish, first fish when I was four years old on a cane pole <laughs> nice. and running home from this rickety old dock to tell my dad I got one. You know, and he came down, took it off the hook for me, and I've been hooked ever since. Steelhead. Big steelhead yeah. up there. Don't Who's up? the board. Leave the board. Let him go. Yeah. Let me let me check that drag. I just tightened her up okay. just to hear. Right. Who's that? Got her? Yeah. Elaine was a big help today as the ladies were supposed to help take the rods out of the rod holder and net the fish. Not an easy thing to do sometimes. We did have a few doubles like this one here today, which is always exciting. We could weigh in one legal limit today, which meant we would keep trying to find bigger and bigger fish. Nice steelhead. Hey. Nice steelhead. Perfect. Good, steelhead. Good job. Good job. Nice steelhead. Beautiful color. Doing pretty good. Ladies have all their fish to weigh already. Um, action's picking up. Usually, usually does get better out here. The sun comes up brighter. Okay. And how, how many miles offshore are we? Right now we're about 17 miles from Ludington. Okay. Craig also runs the local bait shop in town, Captain Chuck's. So if you stop in, you can get some of the latest info on where the fish are biting. Well, maybe not on tournament weekend, but both Craig and Mark grew up doing this kind of fishing. Um, I've actually been fishing since I was six. My dad was a uh, charter captain uh, back in the day, and uh, I was his mate before we had all these electronics and everything. I was autopilot, so I would come out and uh, I'd be the man to drive the boat, and of course if we needed to come in in the fog, I would go on the bow of the boat to listen to the foghorn, because we didn't have GPS back in the 70s and 80s. Uh, at that time, so but we've had this boat since uh, 07. I've been uh, chartering it full time since 08, and uh, I've been doing it uh, like I said since six. And uh, fortunate to have a great crew with uh, Captain Craig Coleman, he's my relief captain, and our mate Braden Engel, he's back there. And uh, Braden's dad actually is the one that caught the uh, 30 pound brown this spring uh, oh. out of here, so pretty exciting. I love to ask charter boat guys how they got into it. And most answers are the same as Mark's. They just grew up fishing. So the next step was to start taking people out. But today, we now had a decision to make. Right now, we came offshore like we talked earlier to uh, find some fish. The girls had their fish to weigh. We need to get some weight. Basically, we know there's some fish being caught inside of us, um, but it's very slow pickings and that bite's kind of shut down. So we're trying to think about going offshore a little bit farther, find another tent break, and hopefully uh, pick something up out there that'll be some weight. There's two 17 and an 18 caught last yesterday, um, about 11 o'clock, so we've got some time. So this is the strategy. you got to either stay here and catch some more small ones or maybe try for some bigger ones somewhere else. Yeah, that's the gist of it. It's the old adage, do you leave fish to find fish, and that's kind of hard to do. <laughs> After a few hours of nothing, well, we were doubting our move. But as this fish appeared, we knew we had made the right decision. Yeah! He's a monster! Oh, that's a big fish. 
What a fish! It was an honest 20 pounder, and the boat was pretty excited to say the least. When another rod went off, we were hoping for another big one. Well, our move to shallow water had paid off. Our king fishing was slow, and then it wasn't. Uh, last little hour was a little slow, but the last, oh, 15 minutes was phenomenal. Uh, the girls, uh, we were talking earlier that we were going to probably go a little bit farther out, but the ladies, since it's ladies' day, overruled the captain and said they wanted to come in and try to get some bigger weight, so we did. And that paid off, even though we just got to ride around for a long time, but we just boated a 20-pounder and an 18-pounder. So uh, we should be right there in the mix with the uh, nice, you know, 10-pound steelhead we got and uh, right. maybe another king. So, so they should be in the running. So head back to the way in Heading back to the way in See what happens. <laughs> well, we were back at the dock, and we found our best legal limit, which ended up being in the top 10, number 8 out of almost 40 pro boats. It was a great tournament. So today was the ladies and youth tournament, and then we're um, doing the kids weigh in already happened, and now we're gonna going on to the ladies weigh in. Then we'll do awards for the women's to, uh, later on, and then it's captain's meeting for the big classic this weekend. The weigh ins have become a bigger and bigger deal, and now we put the bleachers up, and so it's the community is coming out more and more, which is great. And of course, you know we love our fishermen because they spend a lot of money in our community. Total weight, 66.6. Thanks to the Silver Addiction crew for letting me tag along. Thanks to Ludington for another memorable weekend of showing all of us just how special time on the water is here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Hi, I'm Jordan Brown, and for our next door on this week's show, I was once again down in Lake St. Clair, this time to cover the Junior Bassmaster Championship, as well as the High School Bass Fishing Championship, both of which took place on the same day. This is a three-part event. It's the high school championship for all the high school clubs, the Michigan Bass high school clubs around the state. Uh, we've got nine teams out competing today. Uh, they're competing as two-person teams, so the two anglers are the high school anglers from each one of the clubs. They've got a boater out with them, which they're not allowed to fish. They just take them around wherever they want to go. The uh, anglers are all required to know where they want to go and stuff, so the boaters can't give any locations or anything like that or give them any help whatsoever. They're all on their own. It's also a junior bass master, which is our state club level clubs. They, uh, there's two groups in that. There's 6th through 8th grade and then 9th through 12th grade, and those are fishing as individuals. The uh, boaters are really not allowed to help them at all. They just go out and catch fish and buy fish per kid and come back and weigh their fish in. The main goal today was to get kids involved in the outdoors, and more specifically into bass fishing. We had kids of all ages and skill levels on the water today, hoping to find some of the big bass that Lake St. Clair is known for. We're really working on getting our, trying to grow our youth division. We, we expanded it this year. This is the first year for the high school division. Uh, bass just created this a year or so ago. Um, it's brand spanking new, so it's real small. There's about almost 900 high schools in Michigan, so we're kind of hoping to expand the program at the high school level. Uh, and, and start working with the kids and teach them, you know, all about bass fishing and stuff and teach them, you know, how to do some stuff. Um, a lot of the kids that we're seeing from the high school and the older junior Bassmaster clubs, 
these kids are as good as a lot of the adults are. I mean, they've, they've done real well. They, they learn a lot. Some of the clubs around the state have, uh, you know, meetings on a regular basis and do a lot of training and stuff with the kids. Uh, some of the high school clubs, like I say, that's a brand new program. It's just, just got started, so we really haven't established exactly how some of this stuff's going to work. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a real good program, and we're hoping to expand it. You know, we'll just is get, get as many kids as involved as we can in this thing. It's a good, good way to get them off their uh, couches and stuff and get them away from the video games and get them out doing things. Today's a little slow. I'm thinking because of the mayfly hatch. It's, it's been a tough day, really, because, I don't know, I think the fish have eaten so much today that they're just not going to bite till later. They won't bite till lunchtime, which is around like 10 or 11 o'clock, which is what happened yesterday. We didn't get any bites in the morning until around probably 10 or 5, and then we started catching fish. Trying to get a good bite for today and hopefully catch as much fish as we did yesterday so we can get good weights and place good in this tournament. All in all, the morning bite was pretty slow and it had almost every angler we ran into struggling to find a keeper. The next boat we stumbled onto were the day one leaders who had boated over 22 pounds on day one, but were struggling to find fish on day two. Yesterday, it was definitely a lot better. The, the, the fish were hitting a lot harder and they were schooling up more. Uh, this, the, wet, the wind is it definitely... It windy yesterday too. Yeah, and it, it definitely broke up all, a lot of the fish. Um, today, it's a lot slower. Um, and it's like, you gotta fish slower and slower and slower and it's, it's, it's just not as fun as yesterday. These guys did have three fish in the boat, but not the caliber of fish they were looking for. The way the tournament lays out can be a bit confusing for the average spectator, with some kids fishing as individuals, with other kids fishing as individuals on the same boat, and other kids fishing as teams on the same boat. There is, however, a reason they choose to do it this way. High school teams are basically set up with two kids per team, and then they get a boater to come out. We are, you know, require a certain size boat for Lake St. Clair just because it can get rough out there. And then the junior bass masters, those are split into two separate groups. There's a sixth to eighth grade group. Those are fishing as individuals today. They five fish per kid, you know, so they put two kids per boat. We try to really work hard to keep two kids in a boat just so they've got somebody to talk to and something to do all day and enjoy themselves. They go out and fish for five fish, and again, they can call down to the five fish if they start catching bigger fish, which is what most of them are doing. Um, the older age group, which is the ninth through 12th grade group, they go out as individuals this year um, and do the same thing, five fish per kid. They come back, weigh their fish in when they come back in and stuff. And same thing, same format as the, the, all the junior bass masters are the same format. After a full day of fishing and about three pounds of rain in the last hour of the tournament, it was time for the weigh-in, the final step in the day's festivities. If you have a youngster or know of a kid who may want to get involved in this event, all the information that he or she may need is readily available online. The best way to start getting involved is to go on our Michigan Bass Nation website, which is uh, michiganbass.net, and there's a whole youth division on there. It explains how the, every one of the programs works. You know, you can look and see how the high school program works. The paperwork's all there to file and stuff. There's only a few sheets of paper that you have to file with the school and then you file with the state. There's packets on there they can download, see exactly how the program all works. It explains everything in detail, explains all the dues and how the things are set up. We make a lot of stuff available so that they've got tournament guidelines and stuff and club guidelines and bylaws and, and pretty much everything they need is on that website. It's great to see an organization giving back in a way that makes it a little more exciting for the kids involved. If you've got a youngster who likes to fish, you just may want to give one of these clubs a try. They're a great way to get kids involved in the outdoors. Well, that was a great day on the water down there on Lake St. Clair and a really cool event for parents and kids alike. For our next story, we switch gears and we head to a southern Michigan park where I was able to tag along with a few folks from the DNR to learn a little bit more about the banning process for waterfowl here in Michigan.
We're out here at Fish Hatchery Park today and we're banding geese. We band the adults and the juveniles. They like to stay in the water, so we push them out of the water and put them up on, on shore. And then we funnel them into a smaller pen and then we can actually handle them and we bring them out of the pen and, and age and sex them and then put a band on them. And all that information goes into a database. And so when a hunter uh, harvests a bird, they turn that band number in and to the banding lab and then the banding lab is then able to use the information about the bird to put into the models to determine the, the population statistics. Today we were targeting a group of birds on a small body of water that were actually cooperating quite nicely. The number of young birds around this year, and especially in southern Michigan, points to a good nesting season, although be it a bit behind schedule. This nesting season was started a little late, so the young that we're capturing are a little younger than we usually have at this time of year, but that's okay. We're seeing good sized broods, so it looks like it was a good nesting season. It just started a little late. And a good nesting season is where you have uh, water levels that don't fluctuate highly so that the nest doesn't get uh, flooded out because they build it on the edge of water. So if the water all of a sudden comes up, then the nest will get flooded. They'll have to re-nest, and when they re-nest, they lay fewer eggs. Uh, also, you need to have lots of uh, water, uh, rain at periodic times, so the grass is green, so those birds are growing fast. And of course, the adults need to keep the birds away from the predators. Banding efforts over the past couple of decades have grown dramatically and have really helped natural resource departments across the country better understand flyways and population numbers of geese, as well as all sorts of other waterfowl. That information is in turn used to help create hunting regulations and to keep them current as the populations change. Birds are banded in all states that have reproducing geese and these birds can fly all over the place during the migration and so we track the birds and they, they tend to follow migration patterns and those birds then are tracked in that flyway and then uh, the people who do statistics uh, do the modeling to determine exactly what the populations are. But it's important that we monitor the birds because things can happen with migration, things can happen in nesting, things can happen with weather. So we got to keep an eye on the population on a regular basis so we can adapt the hunting seasons appropriately so we don't over harvest the birds. In addition to the research side of things, days like today are also good for something else, and that's getting kids involved in the outdoors, whether it's a future wildlife major or just kids looking for something to do. Any excuse to get them outside is a good one. We like to invite young people out. Number one, they're available during the day, so they make good volunteers. But also, we like to get young people out to experience nature, get hands-on with animals so that they can have an ethic of natural resources. And also, it's fun for them, and it gets them in tuned in natural resources in the outdoors so that in the future, whether they hunt or not, they'll be a good steward of, of the resources. We also invite uh, interns and people that are in wildlife classes for a degree so that we can train them so that they'll be the future wildlife biologists and so we're starting to train them now early even what when they have not completed their college courses yet because they'll be doing this along with us when they get jobs with us. Banding research is very important and it directly affects the hunting regulations here in Michigan so if you're lucky enough to come across one this fall make sure to call it in. I know I'll be spending at least a few days in the goose blind trying to find one myself. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching Michigan Out of Doors this week. And make sure you are joining us over the next several weeks because we have a lot of brand new programming coming your way. Just the last couple of days I spent uh, actually one morning out of the port of Manistee. We were pre-fishing for the tournament that will actually happen this weekend. So we'll let you know how the group that we were with, how they fared over the weekend. That's going to be a lot of fun. Then I was down on Lake St. Clair doing a little musky fishing with uh, kind of a cool combo group. It was actually uh, some women veterans and some women law enforcement that we're taking out. And it was a local SCI chapter along with the folks from Pretty Hunter who kind of put that all together. We didn't set the world on fire when it came to fishing, but we had a ton of fun. You won't want to miss that story. And I was also recently at the Trout Unlimited and the Rough Grouse Society, just had a joint venture to kind of raise some money for their salmon in the classroom and for their youth hunt. So that was really pretty cool. Then our own Jordan Brown is actually on his way, as we speak right now, on his way back from Standard Rock. He was up there with Gabe Van Warmer and they were kind of co-taping a segment for our show and Mark Romanek's show, Fishing 411. So that should be pretty cool. And then our own Jenny Olson recently just shot a story 
battery on suppressors, on rifle suppressors. So we're going to have to learn kind of all that goes into that and what, you know, that might be something that you want to do this year when it comes to your firearms. So lots of good stuff coming over the next several weeks here in Michigan out of doors. And if you do miss something, if you're traveling or spending some time up north or somewhere out on a lake fishing, you can always check us out at michiganoutofdoorstv.com. Full episodes of the show there every week. We're also on YouTube and we also are on Facebook if you want to kind of travel along with us and see kind of where we're at on a more day-to-day -day basis as we cover this great state as best we can and try to bring you as many brand new episodes as we can. So thanks so much for joining us this week. And if we don't see you in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by by Greenstone Farm Credit Services, making recreational land ownership possible across Michigan and Northeast Wisconsin. Begin your land financing journey at one of Greenstone's 37 locations or visit greenstonefcs.com. By Metalloid Firearms and Sports, developers of environmentally friendly firearm maintenance products for cleaning and protecting your firearms metal, as well as wood and leather components, on the web at metalloidfirearmsproducts.com. By the Michigan Chapters of Safari Club International, for over 40 years, SCI has been protecting hunters' rights and promoting wildlife conservation here in Michigan and around the world. SCI chapter locations can be found on the web at firstformichigan.org. By the Michigan Petroleum Association and the National Oil Heat Research Alliance, advocating the advantages of oil heat for home and environment through products like BioHeat Oil, which blends biodegradable materials into a renewable fuel source. Learn more at oilheatamerica.com. Closed captioning provided by Marvo Mineral, makers of Lucky Buck, deer management products including minerals to supplement deer diets year-round to improve health and antler growth. When I want to fire away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream. White-tailed deer in the tall pine trees I am a Michigan man I am, I am a Michigan man Ask where I'm from and I'll show you my hands Lord above, I love this land I am a Michigan man From the Keweenaw down to St. Joe 